Good day, everyone. My name is Hernan Paolo Valier, uh, along with Attorney Merle Soberano, Teresa Victorino, Jen Vasquez, and John Leonard Misande. Um, today, we'll talk about the importance of Republic Act 6657, which was signed into law on June 15, 1988, and is also known as the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Law. Our goal is to give an outline of this important law, its history, and its most important parts, mm-hmm. from its inception to what it is currently. Pero para maunawa natin na gusto ang kasalukuyan, kailangan mo natin silipin ang nakaraan at yan ang bibigyan ko ng diin. So during the time before the Spanish came, there was an agrarian society with different social classes and a lot of access to farming tools. During the Spanish period, the encomienda system was put in place. Question, ano ang encomienda system? So during the Spanish colonization of the Americas and other places, a method of work called encomienda was used. Documents say it's work method but it's actually slavery. It is a way to get native people to work for the Spanish crown in the encomendero, who was usually a Spanish settler or conquistador, by giving them land and making them work for free. So sa panahon na to, nawala yung freedom natin mag-farm at nakikibahagi ilan ang mga magkasaka sa mga anin nila. Now, during the American period, uh, the Philippine Bill of 1902 and the Land Registration Act of 1902 were important laws that limited who could own land and made it possible to register land. So during that time, there was a system in place, but it was an it was an extremely oppressive. Uh, but it was extremely oppressive. Now, move to subsidial terms and key measures to change that system. Major iradon ko lang to para mabilis lang tayo ha. So, President, President Rojas established the 7030 Sharing Agreements for Tenants. President, uh, President Carino initiated the Land Settlement Devo- Development Corporation. Under President Magsaysay, the Agricultural Tenancy Act of 1954 was enacted, along with the creation of the uh, of the Court of Agrarian Relations. Uh, ngayon, so President Makabagal naman introduced the Landmark Agricultural Land Reform Code, aimed at liberating, liberating farmers from tenancy. During President Marcos' era, martial law led to the proclamation of the entire country as a land reform area. Now, the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Law, or RA 6657, was enacted during President Aquino's tenure. This law vested the land back with the responsibility of land valuation. Then, President Ramos amended coral and exempted fish ponds and prawns farms. Um, President Aroy Raman introduced CARPER, RA 9700, focusing on supporting farmers with various services. Now, President Aquino III supported agrarian beneficiaries, established a web-based legal system, and initiated the National Greening Program. Uh, President Duterte uh, directed significant land distribution under CARP, planned extensive land reform, and included lands in Boracay under the program. Ngayon, sumunan natin yung pinaka-core ng RA6657 at ano yung mga nakalaman dito. I-random ko lang din kasi makukugus yung time pag in-explain ko lahat in detail. Eh, parating pa lang tayo sa exciting part. Okay, so Section 3 of the law provides definitions of essential terms crucial for understanding the law's application. Section 4 outlines the scope of the law, encompassing public and private lands suitable for agriculture, lands unsuitable or approved as non-agriculture are uh, excluded. So The implementation timeline is highlighted in Section 5, uh, requiring completion within the 10 years uh, from the law's effectivity. So moving on to Section 6, the law sets limits on landowner retention, not exceeding 5 hectares, with an additional 3 hectares per child titling or managing the land. Now, we're going to talk about some modes of acquisition. The law offers three modes of land acquisition, compulsory acquisition, voluntary uh, land transfer, and voluntary offer to sell. Uh, non-land transfer programs, um, ito yung beyond land transfer, the, the law introduces la- non-land transfer programs like agricultural leasehold, production and profit sharing, and stock distribution plans. Uh, procedure for acquisition of private lands, private lands, section 16, the, the process for acquiring private lands is laid out in section 16, including the notice of coverage, land coverage, landowner's response, and land bank payment. Just Compensation, Section 17, and Mode of Compensation, Section 18. Just Compensation, detailed in Section 17, is determined by factors such as acquisition costs, property value, declarations, assessors' inputs, contributions by farmers and government, farmers and government, and non-payments of taxes or loans. Section 18 explains the various modes of compensation including cash payments, shares of stock, and tax credits. 
Uh, Ma'am Carissa will continue with the reporting. Thank you. Hello everyone, I am Carissa Victorino. So for the con continuation of report under Section 22, here are the list of qualified beneficiaries, agricultural lessees and short tenants, regular farm workers, seasonal farm workers, other farm workers, actual dealers or occupants of public lands, collectives or cooperatives of the above beneficiaries, and others temporarily working on the land. But once the beneficiaries I mentioned ay binenta, dinispos, or inabandon ang land, pwede sila ma-disqualify. Okay. Next is the administrative adjudication under Section 50. So we have DAR or Department of Agrarian Reform, Park or Barangay Agrarian Reform Committee, and last but not the least, ISAC or Special Agrarian Reform. So, no rule nila. DAR is responsible for overall matters including the implementation of agrarian reform with the exception of exclusive jurisdiction of the Department of Agriculture or DA and the Department of Environment and Natural Resources or DENR. But before magtake ang action ng DAR for any agrarian controversy, dapat meron muna silang certification from the BARC or yung Barangay Agrarian Reform Committee that the issue or dispute is not successful. Last is the SAC. It is said that the Supreme Court shall designate at least one branch of Regional Trial Court or ITC within each province as a special agrarian reform. They are responsible for all petitions about compensation to landowners and the prosecution of all criminal offenses under RA 6657. Next is Section 73, Prohibited Acts and Omissions. To make it short, anything illegal or excess total retention limits in agricultural lands and forcible entry who are not qualified beneficiaries under this act is prohibited. Also, yung pag-convert ng agricultural land to not agricultural with the intention to avoid the application of this act to his land holdings and to dispossess his tenant farmers of the land dealt by them or prepare nila and cultivate nila yung land for the crops is prohibited. And the willful prevention or obstruction by any person, association, or entity of the implementation of comprehensive agrarian reform program. The sale, transfer, conveyance, or change of the nature of the lands outside of urban centers and city limits in whole or in part of after the effectivity of this act. And also, the sale, transfer, conveyance by a beneficiary of the right to use or any other usufructory right or the land he acquired by virtue of being beneficiary in order to circumvent the provisions of this act. Next is Section 74 or the penalties. Uh, this one is self-explanatory, I just read it. So, any person who knowingly or willfully violates the provisions of this act shall be punished by imprisonment uh, not less than one month to not more than three years or a fine not less than 1,000 and not more than 15,000 or both at the discretion of the court. If the offender is a corporation or association, the officer responsible therefore shall be criminally liable. So let's move on to Republic Act number 9700, Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Program, Extension with Reforms or CARPOR Law, updated last August 7, 2009. So this act is for the amendments of other provisions and regulations firmly stated in Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Program. So we just know the important features. So we have 11 items. So, Section 2 of RA 6657 was modified to add that the state shall promote industrialization. So, lahat ng mga na convert na agricultural land shall take into account tailors' rights and national food security and shall protect Filipino enterprises against unfair foreign competition and trade practices. Next is Section 3, Recognize the Rights of Rural Women Farmers or yung mga babae na nag-farm bilang hanap buhay nila. Section number 4 states that lahat ng landowners sa may 5 hectares and below shall not be covered for acquisition and distribution to qualified beneficiaries. Section number 6 added to the exception to retention limits that a provincial, city, and municipal government units acquiring private agricultural lands by expropriation. 
Next is Section 7. Priorities from the effectivity of this Act until June 30, 2014, Phase 1 will cover all remaining lands above 50 hectares to be completed until June 30, 2012. Phase 2 will cover lands 24 hectares up to 50 hectares to be completed by June 30, 2012. And Phase 3 covers all the other private agricultural lands commencing with large land holdings and proceeding to medium and small land holdings until June 30, 2014. Next is Section 17 under determination of just compensation included the value of standing crops and 70% of the zone valuation by the BIR. Section number 22 included a provision in the order of priority that a land holding of the landowner shall first but distribute yung 3 hectares sa mga qualified beneficiaries and then yung matitira portion lang ang madidistribute to other beneficiaries. Next is section 24 was amended to include that yung mga land title transferred to dealer and other titles issued under any agrarian reform program na hindi dapat na wala ikinuha after one year from its registration with the Office of the Registry of Deeds. It is ministerial duty of the Registry of Deeds to register the title of the land in the name of the Republic of the Philippines under after the LBP has certified the deposit payment. Next is Section 37, added provision on the equal support services for rural women. So sabi dito, dapat equal dapat, dapat equal ang benefits or support service sa mga babae sa mga lalaki. Next is Section 26 of the Carper Law provided the creation of Congressional Oversight Committee on Agrarian Reform O or COCER to oversee and monitor the impl implementation of RA 9700. Its term shall end six months after the expiration of the extended period of five years. The last one is the Section 63. They should provide at least 1.5 billion from the agrarian reform and other funding sources. That's all, and that's the end of my report. Again, I'm Carissa Victorina. Thank you so much. Good day. Under the present times, which is uh, 2023, Republic Act 11953 was approved on July 7, 2023. It is an act emancipating agrarian reform beneficiaries from financial burden by condoning all principal loans, unpaid amortizations and interests, and exempting payment of estate tax on agricultural lands awarded under the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Program, also known as the New Agrarian Emancipation Act. Under RA 11953, the individual loans of agrarian reform beneficiaries or ARBs, including interest, penalties, and surcharges secured under the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Program or CARP, or, or from other agrarian reform programs or laws, are hereby condoned and written off by the government thereby relieving them from the burden of payment thereof. For Section 7 of the said Act, which is the estate tax exemption, the land awarded to agrarian reform beneficiaries shall be excluded from his or her gross estate for purposes of estate tax. Section 9 provides that any pending administrative case involving the forfeiture by the Department of Agrarian Reform of the Agrarian Reform Award solely due to the failure of an agrarian reform beneficiary to pay the 30-year amortization plus 6% annual interest shall immediately be dismissed motto proprio by the DAR. Under Section 10, any person convicted by final judgment of any of the prohibited acts and omissions under Section 73, mirrored any of the penalties under Section 74 of Republic Act 6657 as amended is disqualified to avail of the benefits under this act. However, non-cultivation of the land due to non-installation of the agrarian reform beneficiaries, threats by other stakeholders or entities, the lack of facilities and support services, or situations and conditions 
beyond the control of the ARBs and is not due to their fault or actuations shall not be considered as either neglect, abandonment, or grounds for disqualification. In conclusion, land reform originally envisioned has long ago evolved into agrarian reform. Land reform, which is principally aimed to redistribute land to poor and landless farmers and workers and to ensure equitable land ownership in the Philippines, has now become agrarian reform, which covers not only a wide redistribution of land, but also the provision of infrastructure, services, support systems, technical and financial assistance aimed at alleviating the conditions of the tillers of the land. The government does not stop and is always on the lookout for ways to achieve a real agrarian reform in the country. That ends our report. Thank you.